What's up guys, Matt here with Tomorrow's Filmmakers and today I have a really special video for you. I'm going to be showing you how to edit video in DaVinci Resolve in under 20 minutes. Now, if you've never opened DaVinci Resolve before, perfect, this video is for you. If you've only used Premiere Pro to edit anything, Perfect again, this video is also for you. In this video, I wanna go over the basics of how to edit in DaVinci Resolve from importing to exporting and cover all the basic things in between that I think you'll need for your next basic video project. Now, the goal for this video is that you would leave with a better understanding of how to edit in DaVinci Resolve. Of course, we do have a video on our channel called Master Your Editor in 20 Minutes, and that one's geared more towards Premiere Pro. This one, I wanna go over DaVinci Resolve and show you how it works. Now, if you didn't know, DaVinci Resolve actually started as a color grading software but thankfully it has progressed and now it is one of the best video editors on the market and even better than that it actually has a free version that is incredible absolutely fantastic I'm gonna be using the free version for this video as well as in the course inside tomorrow's filmmakers where I actually go in more detail on DaVinci Resolve I use the free version for that as well as for this and so I'd encourage you to download it check it out follow along and see for yourself in this video, I will be going over the basics all the way from importing to exporting, like I said. However, inside our full course over at tomorrowsfilmmakers.com, we have over a thousand training videos and over a hundred hours of content on every single aspect of filmmaking you can possibly imagine, taught by leading professionals in the film industry, including our brand new DaVinci Resolve course, as well as a freshly updated Premiere Pro course with the current version. With over 15,000 students in over 50 countries, a lifetime membership to our award-winning $800 online film course is yours for just 97 bucks. Now, like I said, you can learn all about Premiere Pro, Final Cut Pro, DaVinci Resolve, and HitFilm Express, which is a completely free editor, all included in our online course. So no matter what editor you use, we will help teach you how to use it. You'll be able to take all of the skills from shooting, editing, and everything in between to create beautiful images and learn all the skills that you need to succeed. Now, like I said, this video will be a basic overview of DaVinci Resolve in 20 minutes. So without further ado, let's jump right in. So opening up DaVinci Resolve, just like that. You can see all my little test videos I've made here. What I'm going to do now is actually I'm going to start and open a new project. I'm going to call this one DaVinci Resolve YouTube video and I'm going to hit create. Perfect. So now we are in DaVinci Resolve. Now looking at DaVinci Resolve, you'll notice that if you've used Premiere Pro before, this all looks very similar. You have your media pool where you would organize and dump all of your footage and audio as well as your timeline area at the bottom where your clips would go after you've trimmed them as well as your program monitor up at the top right where you can watch back what you've created on the bottom down here. However, one really cool difference between DaVinci Resolve and other editors is the obvious layout and workflow here at the bottom, which is awesome. On the bottom here, you have literally self-explained panels designated for each step of your editing workflow. You have your media, cut, edit, fusion, color, fair light, deliver panel, all neatly organized so that when you're working, you can easily work from left to right. Now, jumping into the media panel, this is where you'll be importing and organizing all of your footage, which I'll get into in a sec, but here you'll be able to keep all of your footage and audio organized and every asset for your project will live here. You'll be able to go over here to your left side and create bins for footage and audio and all that fun stuff. I'll get into that in just a little bit. And going back down here to the bottom is the cut panel and the cut panel is used for cutting, yeah. Here you'll be going through all of your clips, trimming them down and beginning to put them onto your timeline. Now, this is where DaVinci Resolve gets a lot different than any other editor out there. And that's because anything you edit on the cut page will also translate to the edit page. So I'll show you what I mean. You basically have two areas to work simultaneously and working in one will affect the other. I try to really only use the cut panel to trim down my footage and I leave all the heavy duty editing to the edit panel, which I'll go over now. Of course, the editing panel is designed specifically for editing. This is where I work and will spend about 90% of my time. For bigger projects, I won't even use the cut panel that much. I'll just trim down my footage and place it onto my timeline down here on the bottom. However, I'll go over both ways and show you how to trim footage in your cut panel as well as your media panel so you can kind of get familiar with both. And I also go into much more detail on that in the DaVinci Resolve course inside Tomorrow's Filmmakers as well. On the left over here, you have um, plenty of options for transitions, titles, basic effects, which is pretty standard for most editors, but I really do like the way they keep everything so simple and easy to use. You can literally just hover over these transitions and 
it will actually show you what they will look like if you were to use them in your project with these sample clips, which is really, really cool. And I think DaVinci Resolve is like the only editor that has little neat touches like that. Sometimes using Premiere Pro even takes me forever to find what I'm looking for, even though I've been using it for years. So I really do like how DaVinci Resolve has everything laid out so nice and neatly. It's a nice refreshing touch, honestly. Of course, like I said, anything you put in your timeline here will show up on your program monitor and you can hit play and watch it back and see what you've created. Over on the top right, you'll see options for zooming and scaling your footage as well as audio levels and all that fun stuff. And I'll go over that shortly. Next up is the fusion panel. Now, if you're just starting out, you'll probably not use this for anything yet because it's really geared towards more intense editing and showing graphics and creating all that fun stuff that you would typically use in After Effects if you're used to using Premiere. So if you're used to using Premiere, just think of the Fusion panel as your After Effects, except for this, it's actually programmed into the software. So you don't have to keep bumping back and forth between two different softwares while you're editing, which is pretty cool. That being said, nine times out of 10, I don't even open this panel for the basic projects that I usually work on. And so I probably won't go over it too, too much. Now the color panel, this is where it gets super interesting because like I said in the beginning, DaVinci Resolve used to be entirely a color grading software. And so there's definitely a ton to offer here. All of your color wheels will be over here and your scopes on your bottom right. And so, so much more. Anything that has to do with coloring your footage or your project will be done in the coloring panel. Now, of course, there's many ways to do this, one way being nodes, and I'll go over that in a little bit. Next up is the Fairlight panel. And much like the Fusion panel, most projects won't require much work here, um, but it's designed to let you get really, really picky with your audio and make tons of small tweaks to audio clips, master your overall audio, and so much more. I won't be going over the Fairlight panel that much because like I said, most projects I do don't require me to really get that picky with my audio, but just know for future reference, anything that has to do with audio will show up here. And this is where you would really get serious in tweaking it and making it sound beautiful, as well as mastering your overall audio for your project. And lastly, but not least is the delivery panel. Now, this is where you will export and send your projects out to the rest of your computer. Once you've finished a project, you'll be able to pick your output settings over here on the left, decide where your video will save, and so much more. Working from left to right, this is the final step in any video edit, and so this is the last thing I will go over. Now, working from left to right, obviously the first panel is the media panel, and so that's where you would start. But before you even do that, the first thing you're going to want to do is go up here to the top left, hit File project settings and make sure your timeline is set to where it needs to be. Now for me, I'm editing in a 4K timeline, so I'll hit 4K, 3840 by 2160. And for my timeline frame rate, I'm gonna hit 24 because that's what I want my timeline to play back in is 24 frames a second. And then I will hit save. And now my timeline is 4K, 24 frames a second, which is perfect. So now what I'm gonna do is go over here to my master area, right click and hit new bin. And I'm gonna call this one footage. And then I'm gonna call the next one audio just like that and perfect. So now I'm gonna go to my finder window, pull up all that footage from the beginning and slide it into my project. Now it's gonna pop up and say change project frame rate. And the reason why it's asking me this is because like I just showed you, my timeline frame rate is 24 frames per second. However, the video that I shot that I'm importing is at 60 frames a second. So now DaVinci Resolve is asking me, hey, do you wanna keep your project at 60 or do you wanna put it at 24? And so I'm going to hit don't change because I want to keep my timeline in 24 frames a second, even though my footage is 60. So I'm gonna hit don't change and I'm gonna drag my footage in just like that. So now all of my footage is neatly organized in my footage folder, right where it belongs. Now, inside our full course at Tomorrow's Filmmakers, there is a DaVinci Resolve course, like I mentioned earlier, but what I didn't tell you is that all of this footage I'm actually putting in with the course. And so when I go through and edit and show you how to edit in DaVinci Resolve, all this footage is actually available for you to download so that you can edit and follow along and learn with me as you watch the DaVinci Resolve course. So now I'll move over into the cut panel and show you some basic editing. So now what I would do is I would click on a clip that I want to use. I can slide through here and find the spot that I would want to start and trim my clip at. So obviously this clip is like a minute long and I don't want the whole minute. I only want a couple shots of it. And so what I would do is trim through and look for the spot that I want which is him putting his in-ears in, which is about right there. And so I can do I on my keyboard, which is selecting my in point. And then I can hit space and then hit O, which is selecting my out point. And now when I drag this video down, it's only gonna drag the part that I just selected. So now I have this little part right here. 
And since my footage is in 60 frames a second, I can right click, and hit change speed, and slow it down for some slow-mo action. Just like that, and that's what it looks like over here on the top right. Cool, and like I said earlier, anything you do in the cut panel will then translate over to the edit panel. And so now you can see in my edit panel, I have that clip already trimmed, already slowed down, ready to go. So what I would do next is go back to my footage folder, find a couple more shots. I'll just get a shot of him walking just like that. I space O, drag it down, place it right after that. Same thing, right click, change speed. I'll do 0.4 and then boom in the edit panel like I said earlier now these clips are back to back and they look great of course in the DaVinci Resolve course I go through and really explain in more detail how to do this um, some shortcuts to use as well as actually making a video from scratch using all of this footage and more footage but for this I'm going to show you a basic overview of DaVinci Resolve and how to kind of go through and show you a little bit of my editing workflow so moving into the edit panel over here obviously now that I have these two clips on my timeline scrubbing through right here it will show me on the top what I'm actually watching and this is your final video this right here is what your final video will look like so if I'm scrolling through, I can see the video down here as well as up here. Now, over on the left side, you have all your fun transitions. So if I wanted to throw a cross dissolve, all I have to do is drag it onto my timeline and then I can play it back and boom, there's a cross dissolve. So much like Premiere Pro, of course, on the bottom you have your audio tracks as well as your video tracks. Your video tracks will be on top and your audio tracks will be on the bottom. And then any setting that you'll really need to change or go over will be over here on the top right. So over here, you can see your zoom, you can zoom in a little bit, you can change your positioning left to right, your Y up and down, you can change your pitch and kind of make them look weird like that if you wanted to. You could zoom in like that, which is pretty funny. Um, of course, Command-Z will take me back to my original look, which is perfect. Um, you have some stabilization options down here, some lens correction, some retime and rescaling, lots of different options over here. You have cropping, so you can easily crop your clips from left to right, top to bottom, which is great. Softness, which is kind of just like a vignette on the sides, which is kind of interesting. Um, tons of different options to work and most of the editing that you'll actually do for your video will be in this panel so if i wanted to go back and add another clip i could i could add the clip of him walking out on stage from a different angle grabbing the guitar so i could do this and drag it down here to the bottom change my speed to 0.4 just like that and then we'll add let's add two more clips We'll add him picking it up off the stand. And so now I have all these clips in my timeline. Slow this one down just a little bit more. And then now going back to my edit panel, like I said earlier, all of those adjustments are now set up and ready to go right here. So now I can literally hit play and watch it back. I can watch him walk out on stage, walk out again. Now he's going to pick up the guitar just like that and put it around his neck. Perfect. So then you can tell a story and actually use all of your clips in sequential order to make it look really cool. Now looking at all these clips, I could even crop them in a little bit if I wanted to, because right here on the bottom, there's kind of a little bit of a letter box, like a little black line. I could even just go in here and zoom this in just a tiny bit to get rid of that. Now the reason why it's doing that is because we shot all these clips with the GH5S and the GH5S has a weird crop for whatever reason. And so to fix that, all I'd have to do is go over here to the top right and change my zoom. And then I could literally hit copy, hover all my other clips and hit paste attributes and then hit zoom, scale X, scale Y, apply. And now all these clips will also be zoomed in, which is great. So there we go. Now, of course, working from left to right, you would now go into the Fusion panel. There's not really any graphics that I'm going to throw onto this video, and so I'm going to skip it for now, but I'll go back to it in just a little bit and explain how I would make a title slide. So moving on to the color panel, this is where it gets really interesting. With the color panel, you're actually able to color all of your footage. Now, what separates DaVinci Resolve from any other editor is the process of editing and using nodes. This right here is what's called a node on your top right. And so you can adjust each clip or you can adjust your entire timeline. I'm going to show you how to adjust the entire timeline. And so going up here, all you have to do is hit clip and change it to timeline. Now, anything you do over here with nodes will affect your entire timeline. And so with that, I'll show you how to do it. First thing you're going to want to do is go to color nodes 
and add serial node. Now where it gets really interesting is you can either color your entire timeline on just one node or you can separate it based off shadows and highlights, contrast, color, temperature, all these different things to keep it really organized and so I'll show you what I mean. Right here with this node, I could literally right click node label. I could call this one shadows and highlights just like that. And then now when I go down here and edit, all I'm going to do is change my shadows, bring my shadows down, bring my highlights up. Cool. And that's only affecting this node. Now what I can do is go to color again, hit nodes, add serial node. And now this one I can label and call it contrast. And now what I can do to this node is change my contrast a little bit and drag it up just like that. And remember, I did select timeline, so all these adjustments are being made to every single clip, not just the one I'm working on. So I gotta keep that in mind while I'm editing. But now see, if you look closely, your contrast is only being applied to this one node. Meaning, if I cancel this node out and get rid of it, my shadows and highlights are still in play because they're on a different node. So all this is on the top right is just a tree guiding you from your start point to your end point. So right here, this little green dot represents the beginning of your clip with no edits at all. And the far right side, this other green dot represents your finished product. And so if you untap any of your nodes over here, this dot and this dot will be the same. But if you actually apply each node, then you'll see the changes gradually as you get to your final product. But you can keep it all organized and separated and edit that way. So I could even go again. I could hit add node. I could go corrector node right here. I could label this one temperature and then now I can drag it onto my node tree just like that. And now I can go over here to my temperature, maybe warm it up a little bit. Same thing. So all these three nodes are each designated to a specific part of my color correction. That way you can keep it all organized. For one last node, maybe I could go over here, hit add node, corrector node, and make this one exposure. Dragging it onto my tree, what I can do is now adjust my exposure. Now, looking down here on the bottom left, you'll notice that there really isn't a dial for exposure. And that's because every single one of these things down here affects exposure, your lift, your gamma, your gain, your offset. What I like to do is just adjust my offset. So literally what I'll do is go down to this little line right here and drag it like this. And as you can see, my clip is actually getting brighter as I do that and it's adjusting every single one of these clips. Remember, it's not just adjusting the one I'm working on because I have this set to timeline. So you can drag your offset a little bit up. You can maybe drag your gain up and down. Your gain kind of affects your highlights. Look at how the highlights look kind of weird if I drag that up, so I won't really change that much. Your gamma too. All these four things really do is adjust your exposure. So I could drag that one down. You kind of got to just really mess with it and see what looks best for the clip you're working on. Um, and again, remember all these changes I'm doing right now are only affecting my exposure node. Meaning if I unclick this, now my exposure settings are not in play. So now that they are in play, looks great. I can go back to my edit panel and kind of look and see what the colors look like. I can look at them and see that this one looks a little contrasty. This one's a little bit contrasty too. This one's a little dark. And so you could go in back to your color panel and get a little bit pickier. You could click on the second clip, make sure this says clip. So now any adjustment you do is only adjusting this clip. I can maybe raise my offset a little bit, make this clip not as dark. Um, I can go to this clip, maybe change my contrast and bring it down a little bit so it's not as punchy. Same thing with this clip, bring my contrast down. And then this clip, I can raise my offset, bring my exposure up a little bit, just like that, maybe a little bit more. Cool. So now going back to my edit panel, I can play through it. I think everything looks good. Play through that clip. Walking out on stage. Picking the guitar up. Yeah, that looks good. Cool. And so now after you've adjusted your color, another really cool way of using this fusion panel is adding a title slide. So of course, over here on the left side, you could go to titles and add it this way. But just to show you a little bit of how nodes in the fusion panel works, what I will do is go to my edit panel. I'm going to go back to my master folder. I'm going to right click and I'm going to hit new fusion composition. Now I can call this one title, hit create. And now what's it going to do? is it's going to create a little sequence right here. All I have to do is double click on it 
and then it's going to open up the fusion panel. Now, same thing as the color correction with nodes. This right here represents my media out, which is the finished and final product. But to get this, you have to add layers. So the best thing to do is to think of nodes as layers. And so with that, you would start with your first layer, which would be your background. So I'll drag my background down right here. I can change the color of it if I want to, whatever I need to do. All those settings are over here. And so now what I can do is connect this node to my media out node and then boom, now I have a black background. I could change the color of it. If I wanted to, I can make it red or green or blue or anything in between. For this instance, I'm gonna make it black. And so seeing this node and this node connected to each other, all that represents is a black background. So if you're used to using Premiere or After Effects, just think of this as a black background layer and that's all you have. So on top of that, what you're gonna wanna do is add text. So I could grab the text right here and drag it onto my tree and now I have this text node, which I can write out whatever I want. So I could write out tomorrow's filmmakers, just like that. I could go over here and find my font. And so now what this represents is I have my background layer, I have my text layer, but those two combined create this merge layer. And so this merge layer connects to the media out layer and this media out node right here represents my final product. So Going back to my edit panel, all I'm dragging on is this right here, which just signifies everything that I've done to lead up to this final product. So I can go to edit, drag my title slide down, and then what you'll notice is it's a finished product. It just has a black background, white text, and it says tomorrow's filmmakers. So now if I go back here and hit play, it'll show him plugging the guitar in and black background tomorrow's filmmakers now moving from left to right now that i've worked a little bit in the fusion panel and i've color corrected my footage next i would go to fairlight and look at my audio of course this really doesn't have much audio to work with and so i'm going to leave it the way it is if you do have a project with a ton of audio all of that and all of those settings will live in this panel and you'll be able to adjust them with much more detail. Now the last step to any project is your exporting and getting all your export settings dialed in and so all of that will take place in the deliver panel. So looking at the deliver panel over here on the left side you have all of your settings that you'll possibly need to get your export ready to go. You can change your file name. I can call it DaVinci Resolve YouTube Video I can go back to my finder and hit desktop, DaVinci Resolve video, final, save. And now it's gonna save to that folder that I showed you at the beginning of this video. Format, you can hit QuickTime, H.264, resolution. Now this just changes the resolution of your output. This video I shot in 4K on a 4K timeline, and so I'm gonna keep my resolution at 3840. However, if you shot at 1080, you could change it to that. There's tons of different options here. Um, this one was 4k so I'll keep it there my frame rate of course is 24 and so there's a bunch of other settings like advanced settings but none of this really matters that much the biggest thing you're going to want to focus on is your resolution as well as your frame rate I shot all this footage at 60 frames a second and then slowed it down to match my 24 frames a second timeline so I'm going to export it at 24 frames per second so next what you'll do is you'll hit add to render queue and then over here on the top right, it'll show you DaVinci Resolve, YouTube Video, Timeline 1. This is your video that you just hit render to export. It's not exporting yet. This is just in the queue to export. So unlike Premiere where you just hit export and it starts exporting, in DaVinci Resolve you have to hit add to render queue. And then over here on the top right, you can change the name of it. You could call it, you know, um, export 1, just like that and then you have to go to the bottom right and hit render all. Now, once you hit render all, it's gonna sift through your entire timeline and export it into your desired location on your computer. So if I go to my finder window here and I go to desktop, DaVinci Resolve video, final, you'll see that it's exporting to the folder that I just selected. So I hope this video about going over DaVinci Resolve has been super helpful for you. Like I said, we just launched our brand new DaVinci Resolve editing course where I go over from how to create a video from start to finish with music tracks and dialogue and audio settings and transitions and speed ramping and keyframing and all that fun stuff. So if you wanna learn even more about DaVinci Resolve, head on over to Tomorrow's Filmmakers and check all that out. And like I said earlier, we have over a thousand training videos videos and over 100 hours of content on every single aspect of filmmaking you can possibly think of taught by leading professionals 
in the film industry, including the brand new DaVinci Resolve course that I just mentioned. So with over 15,000 students from across the world and 50 countries, a lifetime membership to our award-winning $800 online film course is yours for just 97 bucks. Now, of course, there are people online who sell courses specifically for DaVinci Resolve, but it might cost you a couple hundred dollars when in reality, we have this course as well as Premiere Pro and every other aspect of filmmaking for just $97. So I highly encourage you to go check out all we have to offer, learn something, grow in your craft. If you're starting to develop a passion for photography or videography or acting or anything of those sorts, check out tomorrowsfilmmakers.com and learn all the skills that you need to succeed.